I have one friend that is in the new age and one that calls herself a shaman. I love them both, but knowing how harmful those ways are, I worry about them. How can I let them know without losing their friendship? I want to be respectful and kind, but I also think I should warn them or teach them that there's real darkness in those things. What do I do? It's always really tough when we have people in our lives that are unbelievers and they believe in things that unbelievers believe in, right? Like we shouldn't be surprised at that, but uh, either way, it's hard to see anyone involved in the occult teachings, especially if you understand the dark side of it. Now, as for how to talk to them, I'm gonna leave a link in the description uh, with more information on, on how to be an effective witness, but I find that it's important to understand why someone believes what they do. And sometimes, if I can just be really honest and, and just frank with you guys, sometimes Christians don't do this very well. <laughs> Sometimes we can kind of steamroll. Um, and in my experience, people that are in the new age, they are there precisely because they've been hurt by the church or religious people. They tend to have a caricature of what Christianity is. And a lot of it is just simply wrong. Like they're coming at it from a place of hurt, but it's hard to open their head and ear to it because of past experiences. So what I would say to this is, is to be mindful of their why. Their why as to why they believe what they do, because ultimately the answer to their longing is Jesus. Now you asked how you can let them know without losing their friendship. And I have to admit that I can't say that's always possible. I can't promise a perfect way to tell them something they may not want to hear about without risking this. I think that sometimes you can say it as perfectly as anyone could say it. And if they have a hardened heart that is disgusted with your message because of the message, then you have no control over that. But uh, with that being said, honestly, I think it's very loving. You wanna speak up and warn them. This tells me that you love them and are concerned with their souls. You are a good friend and I'm glad that they have you. Wanting to share the gospel with them is the most loving thing you can do. Now, without knowing too much of the details of your friendship or the situation, um, I will give you what I would do in this situation. And, and this is by habit, but I would listen first. <laughs> Uh, get curious about why they believe what they do. What has their relationship with Christianity been like? What do they believe about Jesus? I find that when people feel heard, they feel seen and they tend to listen and get curious back. This is not just a tactic, by the way. All right, this is just people skills. This is just being a good friend, in my opinion. I think this is just being kind. The reason why I personally do this is because it really helps me understand them in order to ask thought-provoking questions. So a, a random fun fact is that I play video games while listening to podcasts. <laughs> and what this reminds me of uh, in this kind of interaction is when, you're when I'm playing, the more I discover the map, right? The more it lights up so I know where I'm going. And that's how I kind of see spiritual conversations with people. Uh, you know what, let me go ahead and give you a real life example of this. So I have a friend who's basically a progressive new ager on many levels, right? We're very friendly with each other and she knows what I do and she knows what I believe. We have a mutual respect for one another. I know for a fact she has been very hurt by church experiences and has a strong distrust for religion. But because I understand her beliefs, I had an opportunity one Easter to ask her about some assumptions she had about Jesus. She had made a comment about how the Bible had been whitewashed. Now, instead of immediately correcting her, I asked, what do you mean by that? By asking that one question, it opened up a whole side to her beliefs that I had never known before. In my head, it was like the map was opening up and I was able to navigate where and why and how she believed what she did. And she explained to me how she believed Jesus was a socialist and how the Bible has been used to oppress people. So I know that that's all absolute critical theory garbage. <laughs> and hopefully you know that too, but she really believed this. The thing is though, is that all of this was coming from a place of hurt. Now she knows what I do. So I'm sure she was comfortable sharing her thoughts with me, knowing I was going to say something eventually. So in, in basic terms, I just basically asked her, how an over 2000 year old Jewish history book could be whitewashed considering race relations as we know them at, like we do today didn't exist. And this was a very simple question, but she responded very honestly that she had never actually thought about it in that way before. Now, of course we said more, but that was a turning point 
in the conversation. And she quite frankly, uh, I remember her saying that she had not been used to Christians being educated before. So this shows me what kind of misconceptions she has had. And because of our friendship, it allowed for a really good and honest conversation that I'm sure was outside of her echo chamber. Now, the point is, is that sometimes it's not just one talk. Sometimes this is an ongoing conversation and it's a really beautiful thing when the Holy Spirit works in people's lives and you're the first person they call when they need some light in this dark world. I always pray um, when these kinds of interactions happen that God picks up where I leave off, especially when it comes to my imperfect attempts at these sorts of things. So don't aim for perfection, be prayerfully available, be wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. 